Well, lots to discuss. I'm joined live right now by political and media advisor to the Syrian president, Abithena Shaban, for more on this big story today. Um, Russia joining the fight against Islamic State. So let's talk this through. Now, Russia has finally joined the war against ISIL. How long have you been negotiating with Moscow then? Well, uh, the dialogue between us and Mos Moscow has been ongoing since the beginning of the crisis. And uh, as you noticed that uh, Russia and China took double veto four times against all what the West was trying to impose on Syria. And because really the West did not understand what's happening in Syria, while Russia understood all the way along. So the dialogue between Damascus and Moscow is ongoing. Uh, you know, a decade ago, but during this crisis, it has been intensive, it has been real, it has been uh, continuous. Uh, is this a game changer, though? Because obviously, OK, this is the situation right now. We've got Russian fighter jets teaming up with Syrian troops on the ground. How much of a game changer is that, then, in the fight against ISIL? Well, there is no, uh, no Russian troops on the ground. As you heard Putin and Lavrov today, they said we, our uh, assistance is only... Uh, the in, fighter uh, jets. The, uh, in the, exactly. So, uh, but it's not only against ISIL, you know. I don't know why people only use this. Why do they forget Jabhat al-Nasra? Although uh, Security Council resolution spoke about or, or considered both Jabhat al-Nasra and ISIL as terrorist organizations. And besides these, there are tens of terrorist organizations in Syria. There are thousands of, of mercenaries and terrorists coming from all over the world. So we certainly hope that with the help of the Russian assistance that uh, we will be able to undermine uh, terrorism in Syria and we will be able to uh, restore peace and security to our country. Well, the Pentagon accuses Russia of um, targeting not ISIL but actually rebel positions uh, without providing actually any evidence behind that. But how plausible are these allegations? How close? Sorry, I didn't get How you. How plausible are the allegations from the Pentagon? They're accusing Russia of targeting not ISIL, but, but actually rebel positions. Um, how, how plausible are those ac accusations? Is it true? Uh, I don't, uh, you know, I don't know how close really, but what I know is that the way Russia did things is that it did it both in full cooperation with the Syrian government, in consultation with the entire world. Putin was, was asking any country in the world to join uh, in fighting terrorism. And therefore, I think the style of fighting terrorism uh, is very convincing by, by Russians, while the alliance that was made by the United States and the West uh, did not really either follow the rules of uh, international legitimacy or coordinate with the Syrian government and did not really mean to fight terrorism because for they have been around for a few months and they, did, they were not really effective at all. I don't think the intention uh, of the other alliances to fight terrorism at all. Well, uh, talking about those intentions, it was certainly high on the agenda of the UN Security Council, though, and once again, the US has voiced its reluctance to work with Assad, which I'm sure you know. Uh, let's have a listen, though, together as to what John Kerry said then exactly. As the terrorists made inroads throughout large swaths of Syria and Iraq, raping, enslaving, and murdering civilians along the way, the Syrian regime didn't try to stop them. Instead, it focused all of its military power on moderate opposition groups who were fighting for a voice in Syria. How fair do you think that those allegations or that opinion of John Kerry is of the situation that's going on you know, in, I, in Syria at the moment? I, 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 think, I think there's no grain of truth of what, uh, in what John Kerry has said about uh, Syria. I mean, could you imagine that uh, the government would not target uh, terrorists and would target moderate opposition? Uh, after all, 
uh, the, the Pentagon announced today that they are not going to arm opposition anymore because they discovered that this opposition they have been arming is selling or giving arms to al-Nusra and probably to ISIL. You know, it's a, once you are in a terrorist area, you will never be able to know who is who, whether this is Nusra or ISIL or whatever. But one thing is true is that all those carrying arms against the Syrian people, against Syrian institutions, are terrorists. And the Syrian army has been fighting them for the last five years while the West is uh, looking at our country being destroyed, at our hospitals, at our schools, at our architect, uh, uh, archaeological heritage being absolutely destroyed. You know, it's very easy to sit in New York and talk uh, about concepts, but it's very different. The truth in Syria and the reality is very different from what the Americans and from what John Kerry is saying. Mm -hmm. Well, I think everyone agrees that ISIS, ISIL, must go right but how and who must do it we're not entirely sure but western leaders the interesting thing is they seem receptive to the idea of teaming up with russia against isil we know that much but the only snag remains about the question of a sad future why is the west allowing this their opinion of assad to hinder the anti-isil efforts uh, well, I don't know whether I got to right. Are you asking about the West and, and Russia and the yeah, why are they this, allowing this their, fight against? Yeah, why are they allowing their opinion of Assad to hinder the, the abolition of ISIS? Uh, well, because, I mean, this is, this is what, what needs to be done. What needs to be done is to fight ISIL and to fight terrorism in Syria. You know, I really would love uh, the, the West to review all, all their policy in Syria. The problem right from the beginning was not Assad, and the target was not Assad. Just as Libya is destroyed now, and they were talking about Gaddafi, and Iraq is destroyed, and they were talking about Saddam Hussein or about uh, you know, mass destruction weapon. These, these uh, concepts, if you want, floated in the media. They are only used in order to destroy our countries, in order to destroy our civilization, in order to destroy our people. I really believe that the West should wake up and see what's happening on the ground. I feel that the Russians, all the Arab people feel that the Russians understand what's going on in Syria, understand what's going on in the Arab world, and they are committed to international legitimacy and to respect of country sovereignty. And that's why I feel that the Russians are going to succeed where the West did not or did not want to succeed, probably. I'm not sure. OK, speaking just from Damascus in Syria, that's political and media advisor to the Syrian president, Buthena Shaban. Thank you. Thank you.